Dear fellow trade unionists, ladies and gentlemen, in the period we live in, the economic crisis of capitalism follow one another. The pandemic has not only dramatically widened social inequalities, but also has been used for new attacks on democratic rights and trade union freedoms. The imperialist wars and interventions continue unabated, certainly not for human rights as they usually propaganda, but for the resources, for the energy roads, for the ports and the seas in Yugoslavia, in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Cyprus, in Libya, and so many other places. That is why in the case of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the invocation by the leaders of the United States and the European Union and NATO, the international law and the protection of human rights is at least hypocritical. The word peace is not being protected by even more militarism or patronage of all kinds of far-right nationalists and fascists. It cannot be based on sanctions and economic wars. All those who really fight for the world peace and security, what they demand is the dissolution of NATO and all military alliances, the abolition of nuclear weapons and the respect of the independence and sovereignty of all countries not only those which align and serve the interests of the Americans and their allies. Ladies and gentlemen, the ILO's motto for decent work, for sure it sounds very well, but it does not reflect at all the today reality of the living and working condition. To be decent the work must ensure the satisfaction of the contemporary needs those who produce wealth. Advances in sciences and technology have long created the preconditions for meeting these needs. But the way in which this wealth is distributed is anything but decent. It is blatantly unjust and unacceptable. The world class trade union movement has no illusions. We know very well that this slogan only through struggles, solidarity and internationalism can it acquire substantial content. On September, the new General Director of ILO will be in charge. We congratulate him and wish him good and productive tenure. At the important role he is undertaking. Once again, from this podium, we repeat the demand that within the ILO, the WFTU must be treated fairly and equitably on the basis of the principle of representativeness. We demand from the new general director to face with fair and objective spirit this issue. The discriminations and the exclusions must to stop permanently. Such kind of ILO we need, pluralistic, representative and participatory. The WFTU, in any case, will continue to fight for workers' rights and for a world free of work and interventions without exploitation and discrimination. Thank you very much.